What's going on everyone and welcome back. Last week we worked on vector fields and this week we are going to add the transformation the transformation information to the game object. So um, this is going to be kind of a short episode hopefully because we're not really doing anything uh, new or anything. All we're doing is just adding in information that we already have. So, let's see here. Inside of engine, we're going to need game object. Because we're going to need some information from the game object. So I'll put it right here. First we need a private vector2 position. I'll import that. So there's our position. And then private vector2 scale. And then private float uh, rotation because yes we will add rotation but it's only going to be on one axis we don't need to rotate it on the y-axis or the x-axis all we have to do is rotate it on the z-axis so we are going to be putting this in the editor and you might be asking yourself why we're doing private instead of public because well public isn't shown well that's because we're going to have a transformation matrix that we're gonna to have to get from the game object and uh, so anytime we change one of these whether it's position scale or rotation what we need to do is uh, we need to update the transformation matrix otherwise we're gonna have to do it every frame like update the transformation matrix every frame even if it's not moving and we don't want to do that we only want to update it uh, only if it's changed so yeah, I'll put it right here so I'm gonna say uh, public yeah public final vector 2 position and this is going to return position and again, I'm putting final because I don't want to be able to get it and then set it. <coughs> I only want to be able to set it from a setter function, not from a getter function. So then right here, I could put uh, public void position and then put in vector2 v. And for right now, since we don't need to worry about uh, transformation matrices, transformation matrices yet, because we haven't uh, got into rendering it yet, so we will just uh, we'll just say position position dot. Come on. Position dot set v. Right? Didn't I do that? Create method. Apparently, I didn't do that. Oh, I didn't. <coughs> Apparently, I only did a rec class for or a set class for something else. Probably wrecked or something. 
So we'll do public public void set. We'll do vector two v and then say x equals v dot x and y equals v dot y. There, that way we can also use that set function uh, later on in the tutorial and for setting the scale. All right, so that gets and sets the position. Now we need to do the scale to vector to scale and return scale. Here I'll do public void scale vector to V and scale dot set V. <coughs> and one last time need to do our rotation. So public final float um, rotation turn rotation and public void rotation float uh, float V and rotation equals V and then later on when we get into transformation matrices we will add to this setter function all right so that does all that now we need to go into the inspector <coughs> Sorry, I still got a leftover cough from all that crap I've been dealing with for like two weeks now. All right, let's see. But hover. Oh, hold on just a second. I got a kids that are running in here. All right, I'm back. Uh, where was I? Okay, here I'm drawing the variables. So, let's go just like this. We're going to say um, Oh, not game object. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. Selected dot position. <coughs> and then here we're going to set the position. We're just going to go ahead and set the position every frame. because well, we don't really have to it doesn't really change anything setting setting the vector to every frame and we could change it later but for right now it's fine it's not going to do any damage whatsoever so selected dot position and then setting the position to gy dot Go. vector field hmm we're gonna have to change this later 
We've got all these new wrecks being made. And sometime in the future, I need to just make one wrecked and cash it and then just change it and pass it. But we're not going to worry about that right now. I just, I just noticed that I was doing that. All right. New wrecked. Zero, zero. Um, no, no, we are not going to do that. <coughs> We're going to add this, but this is not going to be first. How tall was I making these? 22. Is that plus the padding as well? Oh, padding was two, so it's 24. Okay, I got it now. All right, so this field is gonna be at Y24. Oh, crap. What did I just do? So, 0, 20. What the hell is going on? Stop that. 0, 24. Hold on just a moment again. Okay, I'm back again. The joys of having four boys. All right. So, now we can do the uh, width, which is r.width, set r.width, and for the height, I'm going to do 22. And what else am I passing in here? Uh, sorry, I'm completely lost Daddy. for a second. What? Um, yeah. Oh, good lord, it just never ends. Now I'm completely lost again. Okay, right here. So, vector field, what did we pass in as the arguments for vector field? Rect, the name of the variable. So we're just going to say position. And then what is the second? The vector and then the padding. So the vector is going to be uh, selected dot position. And then as for the padding, how much padding was I passing in there before? Let's see here, int float vector two. Passing in a hundred. No, not a thousand. There we go. <coughs> and close it off. All right. Let's see here. There's 24 each. So it'd be 96. 
we're going to be putting in four different slots. We're going to be putting in the name of the game object, the position, the rotation, and the scale. So we're going to set offset to be defaulted at 96. Go ahead and press play just to see where it's sitting at. So it should be sitting all where it is supposed to be sitting, but vector field, null pointer. Hmm. Can I not? No. Oh pass in a final the way that we set it up is it not going to allow us to do that let's see here <coughs> no we did something wrong just a second. Alright, found the problem. Now I'm back on track. The problem is this. We never initialized it. So, it's null. So, we'll do the same thing here with scale. So we'll be doing that here in just a minute. No, we're going to set the scale to 1-1. One, one. And the rotation, we're going to default it at 0. There, so just make sure that you initialize those right there. Now we can go ahead and do the other ones. So right here we can say selected dot name equals gy dot text field and the rect so new rect uh, 0 0 r dot width and 22 and as for the name be selected dot name oh whoops this is selected dot name. This is say game object. And then the padding, just like all the others, we're gonna say is one hundred. <coughs> Alright. So that should be evenly spaced apart. All right, that's looking good. So now the name's over here. Let's see. Come on. I mean, slow. Say some object. There we go. Our awesome. So that allows us to change the object name. And. We're also going to add a boolean later. I'm going to put a little toggle right over here to be able to to, to be able to uh, turn on and off the object. But we're not going to do that right now, so that will be perfectly fine going all the way across. All right, so let's just take this, copy it and paste it do the scale this is going to be I'm going to start this at 48 it's going to be scale 
and selected dot scale. Make sure that it works. And that works perfect. And the last one is going to be selected dot rotation. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, GY dot float field new rect start zero and go to 72 oops crap 72 r dot width and 22 just like the others name is going to be rotation and the value is going to be selected dot rotation padding 100 <coughs> all right oh forgot the other closure all right, so we will check to make sure they're all exactly aligned how they're supposed to be. And also test to make sure they all work. All right, so that's space apart nicely. Rotation, set that to one. All right, so yeah, that works perfectly fine awesome and I will also need to go in here and change this back to final I ever make an expand? Yeah, I did. Okay. So, that is it for this tutorial. I know it wasn't it wasn't much, but it's something that we needed to get out of the way to begin our uh, rendering stuff because position scale rotation is definitely important whenever it comes to rendering because we need to know exactly where it's at obviously uh, so now we have the getters and setters for it and whenever we start getting the transformation matrices we will be able to update that anytime that it's changed and it will update on the screen so next week we will start the either the renderer or the mesh renderer or sprite renderer I mean I mean they're both basically the exact same thing I may merge them together I don't know though it's I'm I mean you know I've been pretty much winging this the entire time so I don't know we'll see but we will get into the renderer and uh, once we get into the renderer then we will need to know uh, specific sprites so we will need to create a sprite class as well and we only have i believe it's two two or three more episodes before i take uh december off and spend it with my family 
but then I will be back at the beginning of the year. So I will try to, I will try to have the rendering stuff uh, finished or at least, or I don't, not really finished, but getting stuff rendering onto the screen. We're going to be doing the editor view first because you have two different views. You have the editor view, what you see through the editor camera, and then you have the view from your scene cameras. We it's, it's still a while before we get into into the the game view. Uh, because for the game view, we're also going to need input. We're going to need uh, time. We're going to need the ability to switch in and out of editor mode. Um, we're also going to need scene saving. Because anytime you go into, uh, let's say you press play or whatever. If you press play, what it's going to do basically is it's going to uh, get rid of the editor. So then you're going to play it just like how you would if you were just playing it. And it's just going to have a little play button you can toggle on and off whenever you get out of play mode. It's going to go back into edit mode. So we're going to need the ability to save our scene so that when you hit play it'll save the scene and then it'll play it and then once you're done playing it, it will reload that scene so that all the values go back to its default value. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to have to get into before we can start messing around with the, uh, the game view and play mode and all that stuff. So uh, all I want to do now is focus on the the editor view so that we can at least get some stuff rendering and going and you can visually see the changes you make in the editor so we will begin that next week all right thanks for watching and I will see you then